like the way you're living It got me living The plot is vivid in the blast conditions It's like you hopeless at the bar Get a shot to giving Neighbors not complicit I can't blame them though Remember as a youngin I rep Detroit on my favorite coat For around the hood The kind that was only made of snow Man's caught me slipping He tripping over a radio I was running track with the homies I didn't know what to say Because I thought he was joking Behind his back he held a gauge He decided to show me In the midst of broad day All out in the open I was only 13 but it's relevant to today Put a price on life But negligent in their ways Forget a slippery slope It's a precipice that you face And the president set the precedent Evident by your faith For that green Living in that very tale American dream I can still remember Kwame, only thing that he taught me City government's busted, causing a kamikaze Crime waves like tsunamis, they say they serving that white Chopping breaks like karate what? What's the prices for your vices? The sacrifices that you lie with every night And so just so to that rock you, Jimi Hendrix, when your life ends If you ask me, man, I couldn't do it Unity and community barely move as a unit Unless you talking in decimals, everybody will tune in I never move that music you never see me approve it so sorry if i'm not to that standard i'm hoodie two shoes pay expenses is so much expense some families fiend so how are they making a rent placing a bet for the rush of some luck but it was something more like russia roulette and it got me upset living in that very tell american dream Hey, what's up, everybody? This is the El Nino Podcast. I'm Eladio Nino, and this is Real Everyday People. And first first off, I want to start off by saying Happy Memorial Day to everybody. Um, I know for, for, you know, the majority of people, it's all about, you know, barbecues, family, you know, celebrating and all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, that's definitely a wonderful experience for everybody involved, but just not to stray away from the, from the concept, you know, the whole concept of Memorial Day is, you know, in remembrance of those, you know, that we've lost throughout the years, family, friends, loved ones, those who are serving overseas, protecting us and, uh, you know, protecting our country for our freedoms that we enjoy on a daily basis. So I salute to you past present future and uh you know today man was a very good day i stayed home caught up with you know housework you know spent time with the wife got some sleep in and uh you know i'm on the grind seven seven days a week man i don't take no breaks you know what i'm saying but that's what it takes to get what you want and get to where you're trying to go in life man for sure for sure but um uh, today man we got a guest i'm honored to have his brother here man i've been building with him i've been spending money with him you know and uh you know as you see we got we got a variety of things this is my man from sneak heat 2020 this is my man andres sanchez also known as dre that's my man what's up oh, with your boy. boy thank you for having me on man First podcast, excited to be on, man. This is a beautiful setup. It was a lot more than what I was thinking. Uh, like I said, just humble to be here. Dope, man. I'm happy to have you here too, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, it's definitely been a pleasure. Shout out to my man Alexis at the DHDC. He was the one that put me on to Sneaky 2020. Okay. And it was dope because, you know, I had already heard of you. I had seen you on Facebook, but I had never got a connection with you. And then my right, man right. Jimmy was like, that's my man, bro. That's where I get all my shit. Shout out to Jimmy the Barber, Shout my dog. Shout out to my homie Jimmy, man. He done put <laughs> so, so many people on to me. And that, that's kind of where it's a cool little thing, man. Honestly, like, I meet so many different people, and, and the world is so small. I mean, you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that know me or vice versa. You know, it's like, it's crazy. Yeah. And, uh, and, and being able to, to, to deal and talk with those people every day that's 
homies with this, cousins with them, or you know what I'm saying? It, it's it's a blessing too. That's networking, bro. Yeah, you know sure. they say that your that your net worth is determined by your network, bro. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And uh, you know when me and you got together, bro, I really felt like I made it. You know, a real plug, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And uh, here we are. You know, got you on the on the podcast to yes, share sir. your story with everybody. Yes, sir. So tell us a little bit about where you from, bro. Where'd you grow up? You know what I'm saying? How'd you grow up and all that good stuff? You know, the okay. good, the bad, the ugly, bro. Right, right. So yeah, my name's uh, Andres Sanchez. Uh, I'm 31 years old. I grew up in E-Course, uh, right off Saliat and High Street. I uh, stayed there till I was like 21. We always went to school. I got a twin brother named Tone. He's here with us uh, off the set. But uh, yeah, we grew up in E-Course. We always went to school in Southwest Detroit. So from kindergarten to eighth grade, we went to uh, Academia de las Americas, right there off Junction. Uh, after that, we went to Western for ninth grade, and then we went to Sosa Chavez for 10th grade, and then ended up coming out to Asher for uh, 11th and graduating 12th. Asher, that's what, in Southgate? Yep, yep. Okay, that's cool. Yep. Well, good for you, man. I'm happy to hear that you graduated. Yeah, yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, so what's it like, man, growing up in E-Course? You know, like a lot of people, like, um, like they're getting hip to, like, Rouge E-Course now because of the BMF series that right, came right, out. Right. So, like, you know, Rouge and E-Course, like, we slapping everywhere now. Yeah, we yeah, popping, yeah. You know? But, I, you know, let's give us, a, give us a bit about what it's like. You know what I'm saying? Coming honestly, up we, we really grew up in Southwest, honestly, being because, like, we went to school there and... Um, you know, we get out of school. We also went to DHDC. We went to uh, Latino Family Services, which is another um, type of thing like that. Yeah. And uh, so we spent a lot of time in Southwest. My grandma um, lived in Southwest. We go there after school. Uh, we didn't really spend a lot of time really in E-Course. We just lived there. So. Mm -hmm. You know what? And and but that's what I love about that connection is like, you know, because I grew up in Rouge. I went to Rouge schools mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, but all my ties were to Southwest, yeah. to E-Course, yep. you know, even Lincoln Park. So it was like I was able like I had grew up in this whole entirety, you know, what I'm saying uh, Southwest, River Rouge, E-Course, Lincoln Park. Right. And that's where I, uh, it's kind of a, a blessing to be in that little mixture because it's like. Knowing people, like you said, for the Burbs down river is so small. You know, it's big, but it's small too. There's so mm -hmm. many different cities. You've got Ecorse, Ridge, Lincoln Park, Wyandotte, Southgate, Riverview, you know, all that kind of mixed in in a small area. And then knowing everybody in Southwest, which Southwest is so huge too, you know, so it's like. Yeah, no doubt uh, about it. Kind of that kind of gave me a little bit of a head start just knowing everybody. You know, I knew a lot of people. I was always a sneakerhead. Um, my nephew actually. I was always constantly getting shoes for myself, and he was like, damn, if you could have got these in a nine and a half, I would have bought them off you. And I'm like, well, shit, let me know next time you want them. And that's kind of how I started off. Got them for him, and then shout out to Armani. And then uh, got them for one of his homies, and then I was like, fuck, people are actually buying them. And I just kind of took all my extra little money that I went to the would have went to the casino or to the bar or fucked off on some bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, I just kind of invested it and, and grew it from there. Listen, man, bro, the first time I ever went to your spot, I really didn't know what to expect. And when I got down there, bro, your shit was dope as hell, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> thank like, you, thank you. like it was just decked out, bro. Like you, like, like you got a display that's just flavors. Just like when you go to the store and you're looking for something to drink, or you're looking for some candy or some chips. You got varieties. You yes, got sir. flavors. Yes, and he got all that. I swear, I go in there, I be wanting to just buy one pair of shoes because all these shoes cost about two sixty to three seven four hundred, whatever. <laughs> you know. And I always walk out with two pair. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's and funny because I, be I got my homies to come over to match or just kick it or whatever. And I'll be like, come on, we'll go down to the basement real quick. They'll be like, hell no, nah, motherfucker. You ain't <laughs> getting me down to that basement because they already know it's, there's something down there that they're going to want and they're going to end up spending some money shopping with me. But, you know, I try to take care of everybody. You know, I try not to hit you over the head. I want you to come back, obviously. So, ain't no doubt. Uh, we'll you don't even know it. Wheels. I got a mental cart already. I done scanned Man. all the shoes. <laughs> I done put shit in my cart already, in my Man. mental cart. I said, as soon as I get my bread together, I'm going to be right back over there. Right, right. But it's yeah. funny you say that because uh, Gio was over yesterday. Shout out to Southwest Geo. Yeah, you supposed to be here, man. Where you at, dog? Right, right, right. And uh, he had grabbed the hoodie. He was like, damn, you still got this? I'm like, yeah. And he was like, what about the shoes that go with it? I'm like, yeah, I still got them for you. He was like, all right, bet. Well, we're going to start up a tab. Like, I'm going to cop them next week. He said, like, I'm missing something. My tab was like 
six hundred. There was a shirt that went with it or something. And I'm like, just like you said, he had a mental tab on. Yeah. Like I was getting the hoodie, the shirt, and the shoes. So something was missing. But uh, yeah, that's dope, man. Oh, yeah. So how how many like good people have you met like in this business? Like you know, um, like they have shoe expos and shit like that. Right, and right. There's other people who are in the same business as you. Yeah, yeah. Um, like what's it like meeting people like that? Like are they helpful or are they like you, you get know. a little bit of a mix of the both, you know. You you get some people that are are there to to use you for what you have to offer them, and, and don't want to reciprocate. Mm -hmm. You know, as in, oh, I was just here, I seen they had this, and they go and they benefit off of it, and then turn around and they catch some shit, and they don't tell you nothing, you know. But you also get a lot of there's a lot of good-hearted people in this shit too, you know, and they want to see everyone eat, and even if they're they're not getting something, they're happy that you got something and. And you don't come across a lot of people like that, you know. So uh, I've been humble to meet a lot of good people. I've also been humble to not have any bad experiences as far as anybody trying and rob me or give me fake money or anything like that, thank God. And I, I try to give off what I what I want. You know, you, you, you put out what you what you get in, you know, so. Ain't no doubt. And then you, I'm sure you get a lot of referrals too. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, trust, you know, because you allow these people into your home. Just exactly. like me, I run a, I run my studio straight right. out of my crib. Right, right. So I got to make sure that the people that come into my home, are that, mm -hmm. that I'm welcoming good spirits, good right. people, you exactly. know what I'm saying? Exactly. And even the people who get referred to, you know, I have that much trust in my people that mm -hmm. they're not going to invite somebody over here exactly. that brings some Mickey Mouse vibes over here. Right, right. <laughs> Right. Know what I'm For saying? sure, no, hundred percent, and that, mm -hmm. and it's tough, you know. That and that's, it's like, like you said, I run my business out of my home, so that's where I lay my he head at night. That's where my kids sleep at night, you know. So mm -hmm. it is tough, but I feel like as long as I'm running a good business and I'm not on no bullshit, hopefully no bullshit comes my way, you know. And I, that's I treat people great. with respect. If there's ever a situation where, you know, I, I base off all of my stuff off of StockX pricing, so if there's a situation where I'm charging more than StockX. I keep it up, you know, right from the get. Uh, like I said, Gio was over yesterday. A guy came over. He wanted these skeleton Air Force Ones. I paid 220 for them when they first came out. I checked on StockX. They were going for like 200. I told him, "Hey, I'm keeping it a buck with you. I paid 220. I can't really take a loss. I'll sell them to you, and I'm not gonna make shit. I'll sell them to you for 220. But I want you to know." You can't get them on StockX for 200 mm -hmm. And he said, hey, I, don't, I don't care. I want the shoes. They're here right now. I want them. Yeah, because, you know? bro, if you and go to StockX, you're going to pay an extra 50 60 bucks. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you're going to be paying that. And you got to wait a couple weeks for exactly. the. Exactly. Man, I just heard some shit. I don't know if it's real. It's on Facebook. But mm -hmm. they were saying the StockX, uh, or Nike was suing StockX yeah. for selling fake Jordans, bro. Right, yeah. Is that yeah. real? Because, you know, there'd be so much bullshit on Facebook, too. You don't know what to believe. But right, right. if that's the truth, bro, that's whack as hell. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't try to knock nobody. You know, I, I look at StockX like a McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? They make they they authenticate and they sell shoes fucking all day long, but millions of fake shoes. shoes. No, no, no. But they're human beings that are checking these shoes too. You know what I'm saying? So, not saying that it's right or or anything like that. But there is a possibility that they fuck up and they get some fake shoes. You know, but that's where it's like. You know, you never know what you're going to get, really, you know? Yeah, that's why you got to come holler at Sneaky yes, 2020. Yes, It'll get you, know you together. You know get every time. And your shit going to be legit, for oh, sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, but um, where are your parents from, bro? So my mom is Mexican-American. My dad's Cuban from Cuba. Uh, Oye, I said it, pero que lo que, dímelo como está la cosa. Ya, ya tu sabes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so he came over here in 89 and uh, had me and my brother in 91. And uh, he got locked up under that uh, 650 law. So when we were nine months old, he got locked up. And uh, he was sentenced to life without parole, actually, Damn. Uh, for selling cocaine. Yeah, they was crucifying them yeah, brothers yeah, back yep, then, man. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, they was they throwing was the key away. life bids, bro, yeah, for real, bro. Yep. I know a few Cubanos that was in there, bro. But I think in 04, 05, they uh, overturned the 6500 law, bro. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, families, uh, my mom was a part of it, was going to, like, Lansing. It was uh, called FAM, Family Against Mandatory Minimum. And uh, she would go out there and, you know, people were killing people and doing six, seven years and getting out. You know, people were raping people. People were doing all these types of that had a victim. Heinous, and, heinous you know crimes. I mean? Heinous yeah. crimes. And we're just turning out and, and killing another motherfucking ending up back in and doing doing two bids and being out faster than somebody that sold work, you know. So, um, yeah, they ended up changing that. He ended up doing 22 years. Uh, 
when everything wow. was said and done. But uh, yeah, he's out that's, now. That's a grip, bro. Yep. Twenty two years. That's, yeah, for sure. That's two decades and some change, bro. Yep, you know yep. what I'm saying? And, uh, and my uh, mom, my mom stayed faithful to him the whole time, and uh, we would visit him, uh, shit, once a week, wherever he was at. You know, he'd be hours away. It was never close. Man, you know, towards you the end of his sentence, he got to uh, he got to be in like Davison. You know, where he was like 40 minutes from the house, 30 minutes to the house. But uh, for the most part, it was always two hours or better. What was, so he, oh, he was, he did, he was in the state or in the feds? No, he was in the state. In the state. Yeah. Okay. So what yeah. was it? Like Ryan Road, Mound Road? Uh, that's when he was about to get out. He started okay. to get to Ryan or Mound. But he mm -hmm. was in, uh, he was in Coldwater. He was in Jackson. Mm -hmm. He was in, uh, I mean, he was all over the fucking place. Literally so all over. So you grew up going to s visit your father yeah, in prison yep, and yep. all that stuff. And that's crazy. You said your mother stayed faithful to him for 22 ne years. Never had brought another man home. Never wow. went to the bars. Never had somebody watch us while she went out. She stayed, you know, she was a Christian woman. Took us to church with her and uh, visited him. That was, you know, her life was work, taking care of us and going to see him, you know, once a week and. Wow. Making sure he, he still had a, a part in me and my brother's life. Man, bro. Um, yeah, your your mother is a hell of a woman for that, bro. You know? Um yeah, what was it what was it like for you guys though, being raised, you know, by a single mother? Um, like what male figures did you have to look up to? You know, what was that journey like? And and I asked because, you know, I did I did seventeen years right. and um you know, my sons, you know what I'm saying? Even still this day, you know, they, they, they haven't spoken to me since I've been out of prison, you know, but you know, I, I, I don't know what I have to do, what I, I need to say, but you know, whatever it is, I hope that, you know, when the time is right, you know, I can build that bridge back with them. But, you know, just hearing your story though, bro, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Really, uh, really hits my heart because, you know, it reminds me of, you know, I want to know what it's like, you know, what you felt, you right. know what I mean? What you endured. You know the impact that it had in your life then and even now you know right right uh you know it had its, its good and its bad times you know um uh, we had a, a lot of a lot of funny moments you know what i'm saying in in, in, in the visitation uh, i remember being young as hell and they would have they really didn't do a lot of visitation outside and uh you know, because that, that mean they'd have to have another CO sit outside and make sure no bullshit was going on. Yeah. So that was very seldom. But when I was real young, they had the uh, visitation outside and I had sweatpants and my mom and dad was talking. And I was just putting sand in my sweatpants. You know? <laughs> and uh, by the time they caught me, I was just my pants was just huge, just full of wet sand. And uh, <laughs> that was the end of that visit. Uh <laughs> You know, and then we had times where COs would just have this hate towards my dad because my dad was really well liked in there, and a lot of people mm -hmm. showed him a lot of respect. And it was like, you know, that a CO didn't get that, you know. So mm -hmm. I felt like he would try and do bullshit when, you know, at our visits, and he made my mom cry. And my brother actually uh, kicked the CO in the shin. Wow. And uh, yeah, they terminated our visit. So. My dad did a lot of time in the hole because little stupid shit me and my brother did. <laughs> Damn, for real? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, that's crazy. And and people don't realize how serious that is. Oh, yeah, you yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, they, they take safety and security oh, uh, to, the to the fullest, bro. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and it's it's sad and unfortunate to see your family have to uh, go through all that stuff because like one day when they were taking me into the visiting room, I looked over and I seen like my sons getting you know getting uh, Pat uh, patted down. They had to take their shoes off. And my yeah. mom, my mother was a bigger woman, so she she, she used to struggle with you know right, taking right. taking uh, her shoes and stuff off. Mm -hmm. So I know it was an inconvenience for her, you know, even yeah. embarrassing for some. Right, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. And it just really. You know, I, I just really got so upset with myself because I'm like, man, because of what I've done, you know, you know, my family has to suffer. They have to go through this and right, right. they make them feel uncomfortable, you know, mm -hmm. even at times where they didn't even want to come up there no more because my sons was like, man, I don't like how they be grabbing on me and touching yeah, on me. And, yeah. and uh, you know, my mother, too, man, she was just like, you know, me, I love you so much. I just hate that I have to go through this. Right, and right. when I seen it with my own eyes, I'm like, damn, I hate that my family has to suffer and get treated like criminals, too. Too, you know well, I, mean? I experienced that too you know my my dad's mother was from cuba and she came here and it was the same thing you know it got to a point where she was really old and it, it ended up being a really long drive and shit you know and she was like i just i really can't do it no more and you know and it's uh like you said it's just sad you know 
Yeah, no doubt about it, bro. Um, so what were well, like? What were some of the things that like your father taught you while he was on the inside? Like, you know, what what kind of um, advice did he give you like over the years that kind of stuck with you? You know, he always would would say, "You don't want to end up here." You know what I mean? And that that really did stick with me. You know, I, I've had plenty of opportunities to to do other things, and I was just like, I seen. You know what I'm saying? Especially having a kid now, you know, having children, you're like, damn, I, you know, I seen what, I'm not going to say what my father put me through because that wasn't his intentions. Mm -hmm. But if I know better, why would I do that to my family, to my girl, to my kids? You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, he, he did stress that a lot. You know, you, you don't want to end up in here. And uh, that did stick with me. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. Because, you know, the, you know, the, the reality of it, bro, is just, um, you lose more than anything, yeah, you know what sure. I mean? And, um, so you I, can't make up time. You can make as much money in whatever, whatever amount of time, but you cannot make that time back up. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, everybody wasn't as fortunate, you know what I'm saying? To have, you know, had to win on the journey that you did, not to say that it was easy, but yeah. you know, good thing that you had a strong mother that, for sure, that, for sure. um, you know, that stayed involved with you guys and mm -hmm. also made sure you guys were involved with your father because, you know, once, once the father's leaving, they go away, the mothers are the pillars, right. you know what I'm saying? So whatever the mother becomes, the sons will become, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And the kind of relationship that you have with your father is determined by the mother, right. you know what I mean? Yep. And a lot of mothers carry a lot of resentment, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, towards the, you know, the fathers for going to prison and leaving them there. And then right. and then then the kids carry that, that resentment as well, you know. So it's just good that, you know, love and re that relationship was being constantly reinforced through your mother, yeah. you know, and, and kept you in a healthy relationship with your father. For sure, for sure. You know, yeah. so that you know good for you bro yeah 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 and like going like you know going to school did you guys did you guys play sports or anything yeah we um we played school uh we played baseball actually at uh Conkle, which is right across the street from the um school we went to academy of the americas we oh. played baseball growing up played some football um yeah we was pretty good kids that's good Luckily, man you know but like you said you know that it all it all stems from your parents too you know you don't mm -hmm. Try not to get into too much bullshit if you're, you know what I mean? You don't you don't need much. You don't have to look for that attention. You don't have to look for, I need money because I don't, my mom don't buy me shoes. You know, luckily, like I said, you know, not everybody has that. But um, my mom was a single mom, but she, she worked her ass off. She made sure we, we were decent. You know, we, mm -hmm. uh, she always wanted us to, you know, that's the reason why we didn't go to school in E-Course and we went to school in Southwest because she wanted us to learn Spanish, you know, and that was our first language. She always wanted us to be proud of our culture. Um, she, we went to Cuba twice and, and met a bunch of my father's Are family. Are you serious, yeah, bro? What was yeah. it like in Cuba, bro? It was crazy, man. It's, it's literally a whole different country. I mean, the dirt was brown. Like, they had the clay, you know. It was uh, – so our cousins were in, like, projects and lived super poor. And being that we were American, you know, we always – there was always people knocking on the door trying to sell us wigs, chicken, sweets – whatever they thought that they that we would buy you know to get some american money because it was like one american dollar was like 32 dollars there wow so my mom would, my mom would give us a 20 dollar bill you know for me and my brother it was like a crazy amount of money that we would have and be mm -hmm. able to do a lot of stuff with that 20 dollars so uh it was crazy just seeing that and seeing how they live and how much they've never met us and how much they loved us and adored us there you know mm -hmm. we no, were twins that's really and that's good. that's like a real big thing and like Really, in just Hispanic heritage, period. But Las Imaguas, everywhere we went, you know, we was pride and joy and the kings, you know. So I heard they had like still like a lot of old cars there, and Did that's you, all there is. That's yeah. just the old cars because yep. they never and crispy went. too. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, clean. I've been yep. seeing them like I'm like, damn, bro. Yeah. Like and they said it's still like that. Yeah, they. My mom told me like your uncle's a uh, a chauffeur, so he's gonna drive us around in a BMW. I'm like, oh hell yeah, we're gonna be looking crispy. And it was like a 1970 <laughs> BMW. The <laughs> leather was all ripped up and old school, but the little shit that they have, they take care of and and they keep it looking new and they take care they take care of everything. You know, it's crazy. 
Man, that's a dope experience. You got to go to Cuba, bro. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I always would love to go. You know, I got two brothers that are Cuban. My stepdad's Cuban. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of times growing up when I speak Spanish, a lot of times they come out like a Cuban. And right, right. a lot of Mexicans be like, are you Cuban? I'm like, no, I just, when grew I, you know, grew it, up around it. So yeah. a lot of times my Spanish comes out like right, right. that. Right, right. Yep. You know? But, uh, yeah, man, um, you know, it's, it's definitely dope that uh, you got to experience that. Yeah, you know, nah, you for and your sure, brother. Man. And, like, when I went to Mexico, bro, like, I loved it. You know, it was a good experience for me all around just, you know, just uh, uh, the intimacy with the country itself, right. the land, yeah. the people, you know what I'm saying? But music, I was, I was younger, and, and I went through, like, some issues because being Americanized, you know right. what I'm saying? So they look at you like, oh, you're just a spoiled American right, or right. whatever. But I'm, like, coming there to break bread with you, you right. know what yeah, I'm saying? Because, yeah. like you said, my family, you know, they made sure I had what I needed, you right. know what I'm saying, to right. have a good time. Yep. And I went to an arcade one time man it was a whole group of little rascals dog them guys was just looking at me and just all bailed knew i wasn't from there and just didn't like me bro you know what really? I'm just for that and i'm like damn if y'all would have been cool i'd have broke bread with y'all we'd exactly. all been sitting Everybody playing been game. Had, yeah you know what i'm saying well that's kind of how it was like we had some uh we were i went once when we were nine and once when we were 12 and i want to say when we went when we were 12 we had like some 18 year old girls come and pick us up you know and they was like oh we're gonna take the twins to the movies and we're like damn we're gonna go to the movie theater it was an apartment with lawn chairs and a fucking tv and it was a, the movie was in english with spanish subtitles like that was their that was their movie though you know what i'm saying and it was just crazy like i said everything anything you could think of you know it was it was so far behind their, their music choice um the cars just everything was just the style everything was just five ten years late you know but they're just getting their hands on it so yeah no doubt it's about new it to them. Bro. yeah so uh what was it like for you and your brother man coming up like did you guys were you guys always taught to be tight did you guys used to duke it out like what was your guys's relationship like we was always taught to be tight um we're kind of two different people uh i've always been like a hustler and he kind of wanted to follow that suit but he doesn't have that <laughs> He didn't have that mentality, so he'd always get caught. So, like, uh, back in the day, I was, I took a bunch of fucking Halloween candy into school, and I was selling it. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> For real? And, uh, yeah. And then my brother started selling it, got all the all the money and the candy confiscated, and then they called my mom. Like, <laughs> They're trying to sell candy and blah, 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 blah. And then going to high school now it's the weed it's the same you know it was it was yeah. the candy but now it's the weed and same concept he got caught up and uh we got kicked out of detroit public school so that's why we ended up going out to asher but uh we've always been real real close but butt heads at the same time just because we're a little little different people you know yeah no doubt about it and um so your mother and father they they live together now you yep. said and yep. they live where in the they live in florida in Florida, yep, okay, yep. so they're just living. They're the living dream. the retirement life. You That's know, they, dope, man. They love to have the grandkids and us come down there, and they come up here, you know, anywhere from three to ten times a year. It seems like they're up here once a month, but uh, they try to come up for all the events and try not to miss anything and invite us down there. And it's nice to go down there too because it's like it's a vacation, but you don't have to pay for a hotel or food or you know what I mean. They're taking care of all that. They're cooking every day and. They got the cars and they got the itinerary, so it's nice to kind of go back there and relax and ain't got to sweat it too much. When your dad came home, did he ever cook for you? Did he ever have? Oh, yeah. What are some of your favorite uh, dishes? Uh, like Cuban dishes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got to be the, the bistec and the arroz blanco con frijol en negro. Oh, yeah. shit. That's he my does, favorite, He does it all, bro. man. And, uh, man, the platano frito, mm -hmm, bro, with the yep. yuca, with the ensalada. He, My dad used to always go fishing, bro. He loved fishing. Okay. So I grew up eating, like, you know, walleye, all that pescado, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And uh, it was either, like, the pork chops I loved. Or, or uh, if it wasn't the pork chops, it was some fish, you right, know? Right, right. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I used to love the black beans, the white rice, bro. That was that was my – and vinegar. He used to put vinagre on the, mm -hmm. on the salad. Like, we didn't use salad dressing. Yeah, yeah. It was just straight vinegar. Yeah. I love Cuban food, though, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it gets a little tiring after a while, man. I, that's all we eat, so it's like – Switch it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, no doubt about it, man. I'm always eating tacos in the hood, bro, because, you know, I work in the hood. You right, know what right, I mean? Yeah. So it's like you want something quick, you oh, know yeah. what I'm saying, other than Burger King or something, man. Right. You, there's a million taco trucks. Yeah, get you some carnita tacos. Yeah. And... I finally found a spot over there on Junction and Christian, see, because I love elotes, bro, but everybody, like mangonadas and everybody, like they be selling the, the corn in the cup. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that shit. Right, I, mean, right, I like the corn on the cob. Right, I like right. that shit all over my face, Hell, you know yeah. what I'm saying, bro? I love that shit, man. Right, I right. found a spot the other day. Went and got one, bro. You know I had to double back for another one, bro. Yeah, that motherfucker yeah. was so good. Yeah, I love them motherfuckers, man. We we grew up on that shit too, you know, being at the schools. They, elotes and fucking uh and the ice cream, man. We used to eat fucking the ice cream. Oh, yeah, the paletas, every day. yeah, yeah them paleta, good man, fruit. Be there. I used to tell them it was my birthday every day. Try and get <laughs> try and get the free paleta out of them. Man, it's so dope, bro, because like when I used to live in East L.A., when I lived in Chicago, like, I, I grew up, like, around all that. And it just was never in Detroit, you know right, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we selling the chicharrones, the frutas, and mm -hmm. all that. I'm like, damn, why don't we have it in Detroit? Right. So when I came out to join, bro, like, all of it. Slowly but there, surely, bro. it was all there. I was Hell like, yeah. damn, man, that's so dope. I love it, man. Yeah, we just got back from Cali, man. Cali's so beautiful. I love Cali, man. Yeah, what part did you guys go to? Uh, we were in L.A., yeah. Okay. All, all through LA, went to you know the Venice Beach, uh, Fairfax. Went to the Supreme Store. I did a lot of kind of a business trip, not per se. You know, I, I wanted to see kind of what their stores were like, how their pricing was like, how they set up their things. Just get a couple of little ideas for when I'm ready to say, oh, I like the way they did this in Cali, and I like the way they did this in Houston, but. I don't like the way they did this and kind of just throw it all together and yeah. make my own shit. Did you blow some loud out there? Oh, uh, man. <laughs> shout, out to, shout out to Backpack Boys, man. Get me together every time when I'm in Cali, man. We we definitely went to Cookies on Melrose and spent the bag. It's it's a must. Yeah, no gotta, doubt you about it. You, got, you go Cali there, you got to go there for the full experience, Yeah, for bro. sure, for sure. You know, and they say it ain't nothing like that Cali bug, oh, man. Oh, man, it ain't. Know? Yeah, that taste, man, it's... Yeah, I want to go out there one of these days, bro. You know, as an adult. You mm -hmm. know, I lived out there when I was 12, 13. Right. But as an adult, I would love to go out there, bro, and have a blast, man. Yeah, it's a man. different culture out there, too. That whole yeah. vibe was different, man. That fucking, uh, the traffic is crazy, though, man. We were, uh, we were at Venice Beach, and our Airbnb was like 12 minutes from, or 12 miles from uh, Venice Beach. Mm -hmm. And it took us like an hour and 10 minutes to get there. 12 miles. Damn. Shit's crazy, yeah. It was it was ridiculous. <laughs> and then the motorcycles out there, they'd be driving like an asshole going through the middle of the lanes, and it's crazy. Hey, man, shout out to Banshee Kid, man. You know, oh, yeah. them boys be getting it in, though, bro. Sure. I be seeing his videos, but just in the hood in general, especially you go anywhere on, like, Michigan, McGraw area, bro, yeah. they be, like, 10, 20 deep, bro. Oh, yeah. Stunt and bike bug. Life, I'm like, damn, yeah. bro, that's really dope. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I like I would love to be able to do some shit like that, but I wouldn't even try it. Right, right. <laughs> I wouldn't even dare try it. Too old and too big for that shit. The weight is just I'm not I'm just disproportionately <laughs> built for this shit. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. <laughs> you I get I get scared anymore to jump on anything too, man. <laughs> hey, do you know how to ride a bike? I no. Hell no. no me I've either, been one one. I wanna get a Harley though. I don't wanna be I I, don't, I ain't worried about going fast. I just want you to hear me, you know. Dog, I want to get a slingshot. That's what yeah, I want, bro. Yeah, too. They're Listen, hard. so, you know, I, I work Greek Town Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Shout out to my ceasefire team. We out there. We help out with crowd control and yes, keeping sir. the peace, make sure everybody get home safe and alive. You know right, what I'm right. saying? But we be on the strip. We be posted. And, bro, I see some of the coldest, coldest, coldest rides I ever oh, seen yeah. before. They got these rims called moon rocks. My dog was telling me, because I'm like, dog, what are them? You know, and he's like, they're moon rocks. And it's literally like a moon that just goes like this. This, yeah, bro. it's heavy at On the, the bottom rim. and it yes, just kind of yeah. rocks. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, bro. But I mean, I've seen the coldest uh, uh, slingshots like decked out with mm -hmm. sounds and lights. And I'm like, damn, bro, that shit's sweet as yeah, hell. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. What about, uh, do you know anybody that went to the, uh, the, the movement, the music fest? No, I did not. And I, I, I'm kind of mad because I, I fuck with everything, like all types of mm -hmm. genres of music and, uh, I've been wanting to go to that, man. I feel like that'd be pretty dope, man. We had some pretty good weather. Go out there, smoke, chill, you know, just soak it in. Yeah. I think that would have been lit. Yeah. yeah, me and my wife went down there no yesterday, shit. bro. And we were going to actually go in the bitch, but 
I didn't know it cost one hundred twenty dollars each God person. Damn. I said, "Shit!" Right. I was not prepared for that. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Crazy. But I said, "You know what? It's all good." We just walked around because right, right. people was everywhere. Yeah. The sounds was, you know, you right. could hear that anywhere right. downtown. Yeah. So you know, I was just happy just being in the vibe around things. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. And it was like really dope. You know, and that's the thing about music. It's just, you know, it's a form of just expressing yourself exactly. in the more realest way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And just you know, it was really dope, though, bro, just to be down there, even though I didn't get to go inside. But Yeah, my niece down in Miami, uh, Mookie, her boyfriend is a DJ, and uh, that's what he does, a lot of, like, the house and the techno. And uh, I never really fucked with it, but like I said, I've been open to everything. And he had took us mm -hmm. to this little um, this bar down there in Wynwood, and, uh, shit, we was out there till like, 4 in the morning. Just, like you said, just just vibing, you know, with the music, and uh, it, was, it was nice. Mm-hmm. What's up with this thing right here? What's this? It's just a, a Supreme skateboard. Um, okay, you sell this too? Yeah, I do a lot of little different accessories. Uh, this is probably more so like um, something that you would put up on a wall, more so than you would skate. Oh, if okay. you wanted to skate with it, hey, you go ahead build, and skate you if you want to. But uh, yeah, these are more so like hang them up, you know what I mean? That's dope. Yep, what that's are these here? These are the uh, military fours. These just came out last Saturday. These here. Yep, yep. The fours have been going crazy lately. The the Jordan ones, the fours, and the dunks. So that's kind of some of the stuff that I brought. Them boys are hard, bro. More different fours here. You know, the UNC fours. Them are dope. Them are hard. Oh, I forgot. I brought you. A, brought what? you a T too. Hell get yeah, you, my you, dog. Get you I right love present. Sneak heat T. My man, thank you, yes, brother. Sir, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Red Thunder Force. So yeah, the Force Force has been going kind of crazy lately. I said long. Bro, with you the see dunks. the you see the Sneaky 2020 way? We got all the flavors, baby. <laughs> we got some for men, women. You got you sell shit for kids too? Kids, shit. We might even have something for you want to put your dog in some dunks. We could probably put that together. Damn, yeah, we for got real. We got Tyler sizes. Uh, we do a little bit of everything. Clothes, hats, like I said, Supreme accessories. Bro, I don't know how you keep up with this shit, bro. It's tough, man. It's tough as hell. And it's tough because something that I might like, my customers might like, and I might go crazy. I ball out because I'm like, oh, these going to sell like crazy. And then I end up sitting on it or, you know, it's... it's it's a gamble with anything, you know. And then I noticed that sometimes the prices fluctuate. Yeah, yeah. From one week to the next. Yeah. Like initially, um, when I had bought them, uh, what are them Yeezys and black ones with the royal, the dazzling blue? Dazzling blues, yeah. Them bitches are hard as hell. Yeah. But I when I wanted blue. them, them bitches was like eight hundred dollars, bro. You know what I'm saying? But it seemed like every few weeks, every month, that bitch went down. Dazzling blues. That's, them boys are so hard, bro. For real, them boys are cold, dog. I love them. They're like, yeah, it's, it's the first pair of uh, of those, the, what are they, the 350s, 350s right? Yep, yep. First pair I, I ever bought, bro, and I love them. Most comfortable shoes. To, and I tell people, I'm, like, I'm not even trying to sell you, but honestly, they are the most comfortable shoes. You get the right fit, you know, and uh, it's a good everyday walk all day shoe, for sure. No doubt about it, bro. I want to come pick up them um, oats, them MX oats you got. Some boys yeah, are got hard, you. too. I got yeah, you. for sure, you. man. But I love this dog, but it's crazy because when I came home from the joint, like before I went, like if you spent 160, bro, like you was, was doing, doing the thing. Yeah, you was yeah. doing it. You know what I'm saying? You get a pair of, you know, Jordan winter boots and, you know, for 160, 180, and you killing the game. Right, right. Man, I came home. You <laughs> listen, everything was 250 and Hell up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Went up. I go to Southland. Man, my brother Pat, man, rest in peace. He was clowning right, on me because I done bought some some Jordan. I don't know. I don't know how to keep up with shit. Right, I just right. get what I look with look sweet to yeah, me. Yeah. He's clowning me like, oh, there ain't no real Jordan. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> the fuck you mean it is? Yeah. They say Jordan. He's like, oh, them the Mickey the Mouse ones. Jordans, yeah, dog. So I had to learn about the shit, you know, yeah. and it's hard to keep up with the 11s, the 4s, the retros, the this, the that. I'm like, I don't Nine know. Nine times out of ten, if you get some Jordans out the mall, you got some bullshit because that shit is gone <laughs> so fast. I'm the motherfucker hunting it down, so I know the shit's gone fast. Yeah. I didn't know, though, because back then, that's where you got your yeah, Jordans now. Yeah. You know, now everything's online. Right. And I didn't know how to work the internet like that, Well, the bro. game's changed so much, too, because <coughs> it's like shit that, that the sneakerheads back in the day would have fought and shot a motherfucker over are 
shoes that are flopping that aren't doing well. You know, and it's uh-huh. crazy. Oh, well, like I said, the Jordans, the dun- the Jordan ones, the Dunks, and the Fours, people are going crazy for. And some of like the Thirteens, the Twelves, the Sevens that were like the OG, everybody wanted. Nobody wants them now. It's crazy. Man, I be seeing some crazy looking shoes. I had, you know, I I got risky and bought a pair of them on um, Versace chain reaction. Okay. You know what I'm yep, saying? Yep. Like from a look away, you like, man, this shit look crazy. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. But when I threw them on, I felt sweet. You know what <laughs> right, I mean? Right, right. But I be seeing some though, like some Balenciaga shoes, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, them bitches look. You look like a transformer. You yeah, know what hell I'm saying? Yeah, they're different for sure, man. Yeah, that shit's crazy, man. But I, but what I love though is the creativity, though, bro. Yeah, like, yep. like, like the new generation when it came to being creative. Like, I love it, dog. Like, mm-hmm. they just broke down all the barriers and just like and just at free will, just designed and created something for everybody. Even if you think it's the goofiest looking shit in the world, there's a thousand people that gonna like it and be wearing it. Well, that, you know that's what, I'm what saying? I thought. What was so sweet about Cali because you just you walking down the street and you see all these crazy motherfuckers, but it's not so crazy because there's another crazy motherfucker right here. You know, it was like they were willingly free to express themselves how they wanted, how they wanted to design themselves. Where here it's like, oh, he don't, he, he ain't wearing that, so I ain't gonna wear that. You know, where there it's like people did what they wanted to do, where they what, what they wanted to wear, and, and threw some shit together and make it look sweet. You know. So how did you come up? Let me show the shirt because this is your brand, right? Yep, yep. This is the Sneak Heat brand yep. T-shirt. He's got his own shit made. I think it's dope. But so yeah, that's the, how uh, did you get into the entrepreneurship of it? How did you get into? The, how did you come up with the name? You know? Yeah. Uh, the name. I don't even remember how I came up with the name. To be honest, I know I. He was high I as was hell. Doing, yeah. Look it, bro. We call it sneaky. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was doing a lot of shit off my uh, my personal Instagram because I run everything through my Instagram right now. I don't have a Facebook. I don't do uh, eBay sales or nothing like that. It's all through Instagram. But uh, I was running it through my personal page, and it was like. Damn, should I post a picture of my kids? I'll just post a picture of these shoes. Like, wh- which lane am I going with here, you know? And then I was mm-hmm. like, fuck it, I'm going to make my own page and see how it does. And, and it took off from there. Um, the shirt actually is a Chrome Heart inspired shirt. So Chrome Heart makes a tee that is exactly like that. But instead of sneaky, it says Chrome Heart. And they go from like 350 to $600. And okay. I just figured uh, an affordable way to get that same look and rep sneak heat so it's kind of okay. sweet man i go i go fucking to the mall i go place and i'll see people with that shirt but i don't i don't remember selling it to them you know what i'm saying yeah. i don't remember seeing them ever and i'm like damn that's crazy like my shirt my name is it's it's like a billboard you know what i'm saying yeah a walking billboard and it's pretty dope and that's how i feel bro about like my hoodies my t-shirts mm-hmm. all that like I'll see people, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so many times people have been like, man, so many people I ran into somebody and, and they knew you or they was your cousin or they said, damn, that's mm-hmm. my people or that's my homeboy. You know right. what I'm saying? And it's just, you know, I, even bef- before I got home, I was like, bro, one day my my name is going to be worth some money, bro. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, I'm going to make sure that happens. Somebody going to pay me for being Eladio Nino. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Somebody going to yeah. pay El Nino podcast. They, somebody going to cut the check mm-hmm. and I'm going to come back some more shoes, you know what yeah, I mean? for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I had got the shirts because we had did a uh, sneaker event at Kobo, and it was uh, it was pretty big, and I was like, fuck it, I'm going to order like 50 of them, and I kind of just did 25 black tees with the uh, white lettering, and then 25 white tees with the black lettering, and uh, before I even got them made and shipped to me, I had kind of just had an idea, and I put it out there, and I sold like 35 of the 50 shirts before I even got them. People was just sending me cash app, Zell. I want an XL, hold me down a, a medium. I want white and black, and la da 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 Then I reached out to my mans that does them. Shout out uh, Mexican Town Screen Print. And uh, he whipped me up like 50 more. And then uh, I took them to the event. They sold pretty well. And uh, now i just kind of been giving them away. I made my money back. You know, I'm, I wasn't really looking to make a profit on it. I just wanted to get my shirts out there. Um, so now, like I said, it's, it's, it's dope as fuck. You know, yesterday I went to my sister's house for Memorial. Uh, she did a little barbecue. And my niece had just got off work, and she had my other uh, – I have another sneak heat print that was um, a bunch of uh, NBA and MLB logos. So, like, 
It said Sneak Heat, but the S was the Seattle Mariners. The M was the Nationals. Oh, yeah. And they had different team logos. That's dope. And uh, she took, she works at Kroger. She took her little Kroger apron off, and she had the Sneak Heat shirt on. Like, Let me find out you repping Sneak Heat at That's Kroger. sweet. You know, and it's like, everywhere I go, I go to my homie's house. He's wearing the mm-hmm. Sneak Heat shirt. I pick my daughter up from school. She's got the Sneak Heat shirt, and it's like, That's got to feel awesome. good, you know? bro, yeah, for real. That's great. support. I actually seen that shirt when I was looking through them. But you didn't have a two X. But mm-hmm. when I seen that, I was like, "Damn, that bitch is hard, yeah, bro." Yeah, yeah. I get people that ask me to to bring that one back just because you could wear whatever hat with it and kind of match it off of that. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was pretty dope little design. Yeah, that's really sweet, man. So how do you uh, do? You got partners in this? Is something that you do independently? Um, if if you were to get in the shoe game, how much does it take to get in the shoe game? Okay, so uh, as of right now, I just do it all by myself. I mean, I got a team. I got my girl and I got my son that go out with me. They're not happy about going out, out with me. <laughs> I tell them the night before, and my son's like, oh, well, I was planning to go chill with Nico and so-and-so. No, nah, <laughs> well, scratch that. I need you at least till 3 o'clock. You know, and we do our little runs, and we pick up whatever shoes we can. And my girl's like, when are we going home? I just got two more spots. We get to those two <laughs> more spots. I just got four more spots. And the day just keeps getting longer and longer as we go. But once we get home and she smokes and we eat and relax, everything's good, you know. And she knows that she's she's a she's a huge help to the process. Shout out to Alexis, holding it down always. But uh, right now it's just me. Um, as far as like the the the, the head of, head of it, I guess you would yeah. say. Um, you the CEO of this. This your yeah. business. Yep. Yep. Um, What's the goal? What's the mission? What's the future look like for Sneak Heat? Like, eventually, do you want to get like a storefront? Yeah, eventually, yep, yep. like, you so know. yeah, I just I'm trying to get all my ducks in a row. I work a really good job right now, so it's hard to just say I'm gonna leave making that much a week. Oh yeah, and, and just focus all on this. No, no, you got to when, it, have when a I job. can do both. You know what I'm saying? That yep. that's kind of what's what's held me on because it's like my my job really kind of pays for this shit. You know what I mean? Because like, like this shoe came out last Saturday. I spent uh, $9,800 on just this <laughs> shoe, almost 10 grand, you know. And uh, it's not like that every week, but most releases yeah. are, are anywhere between 3000 to 5000 because wow. I got to make sure I got you want a size 5, she want a size 7, you need a 13 and a 6C. I got to have that range of all these different shoes and sometimes multiples in order to make everybody happy, you mm-hmm. know. And as soon as I tell you, you know, you say, oh, you got this shoe in the 13. And I said, no, I don't get it. And then the next shoe, you got this in the 13. No, I ain't get it. Now you're not yeah. hitting me up no more because yeah, I'm not consistent. Yeah, because you ain't never got my yeah, size. Yeah, I ain't got your size. You're going to the next person. You got these in the 13, you know. So I, that's that's been my main thing. Whenever I see one of my sizes, I only have 15 size 12s, different shoes. What are your most uh, popular sizes? Right now, I know nine and a half got to be a yeah, high commodity. Yeah, That's yeah. my size, nine yeah. and a half. Nine and a half through eleven are, are my most uh, most customers wear, but my twelves and thirteens are so hard to get. When I do get them, I get one or two, and they're sold that same day. And then I get a customer, damn, you ain't got shit in the twelve or thirteen. And it's yeah. like I got somebody that tells me when I get a thirteen, call them. They want it no matter what it is. You know what I mean? So damn. half the time it don't even make it back to the shop. It's already sold. Because that's, people want shoes like that, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I get a lot of customers that are, they're buying every single release every week consistently. And I'm humbled, humbled and blessed to have those customers, you know? Oh, yeah, no doubt about it, bro. But, you know, um, it's not even just doing good business. It's about, you know, it's pleasant. You know, you're a pleasant person to deal with. You know, me, I b- always believe firmly in um, supporting, you know, local business, local people. Like, oh, yeah. I love, you know, the the um, journey that everybody's on to, you know, independency and just, you know, this is your hustle and you got a job. You got to have a job. Right, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yep, yep. You, you know, I got two jobs and and I hustle mm-hmm. and I sell hoodies and, I, you know, right, yep. it, you, you need all that, you yeah. know, especially when, you know, you want to live a, a decent life, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, today, man, gas is high, electric's yeah. high, everything's high. It's so tough, it's, it's like, hard out shit. Here, man. It's, it's definitely hard out here. And, and, and going back off of what you was just asking me, I get people that when I post... 30 pairs of one shoe people were like how how i'll pay you whatever you want <laughs> tell me how you did it i want to do the same thing and it's like that shit doesn't come overnight either though and then mm-hmm. and it, you can have 100 grand and be ready to buy this many shoes but you're not going to get them because it takes time it takes going to these stores it takes a routine it takes 
them knowing your face, from, from uh, them familiarizing themselves with you, and and me going there. And some I, I go into stores. I'm like, you got anything good for me? And they say, nope, not right now. And I walk away. Mm-hmm. I don't sit there and argue with them. I know you got this. I know you're you're supposed to have this. And uh, you know, it's about being respectful to them, and they'll turn around and be respectful to you, and they'll tell you, I ain't got shit today, but don't tell nobody. Tomorrow we're supposed to have 14 more military fours in, in the morning. Me, my girl, my son, wait right there first thing <laughs> in the morning, ready, not telling a damn soul, you know. And so that's dope, bro. I mean, you know, that's 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 the name of the game, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, I I I uh, cause what is it? it's like a raffle or sometimes yeah, people exactly. go on to get yeah. them. And I used to ask my couple of my homies, like, man, get me a pair, get me a pair, you know. And they always got them for themselves, but could never get me one. And they, oh, man, with a raffle, sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. Not only that, even if you do get it, it's one per person. So, like, excuse me, I can't walk into a store and say, oh, what size do you got? And they say, we got 8 through 12. And I say, well, let me get an 8, 8 and a half, 9, 9 and a half. It's one shoe per person. Mm-hmm. So the only real way to beat the game is having bodies with you, you know, and going to multiple places, obviously. But. Um, there's a lot of shit behind it, man. And my, like I said, my Saturdays, days that, that a shoe releases, my day is hectic as hell to like 7.30. I'm in line arguing with people. People show, <laughs> you know, I'm there three hours before the store opens and then 30 minutes before the store opens, somebody wants to pull up and try and cut you. Mm-hmm. And you're like, hey, I've been here. I'm with my girl, my kid. I'm three, four, and five. No one's ahead of me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and it's gotten there plenty of times, you know, where I thought I was going to have to scrap with somebody, but sometimes it might take that. Not that that's what I want, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's like you can't you gotta let people stand you your ground. You got to stand your ground. You know yeah. it's going to happen every week. So close mouths don't get fed, and you got to let motherfuckers know what time it is. And shit, you want to get froggy, then mm-hmm. leap. I understand. <laughs> like I said, that's not the type of person that I am, but. I'm with my girl and my kid. I ain't about to let nobody push me around. and You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I got no my doubt son about looking it. up to me. I got my girl looking at me like, what are you going to do? You know what I'm yeah, saying? So, yeah, no doubt, man. I, and that's risky sometimes, mm-hmm. though, you know, because, you know, you want to stay solid in front of your family because you always want them to feel, you know, protected and, right. and safe with you. But, you know, sometimes you got to learn how to pick and choose your battles exactly. because you, you get to. yourself into a situation that could harm your wife and right. your kids. And yep, you know yep, what I'm yep. saying? Somebody can get hurt because everybody got guns bro everybody yeah. it's like yeah. the wild wild west bro yeah. I, I work down in greek town and these guys are running around with dracos on their neck bro mm-hmm. and side pieces and i mean you know just walking around like it ain't nothing you right. know what yeah. i'm saying and i'm like yeah. damn bro this is like the wild wild west out yeah, here for sure you know and it, it, it does make people uneasy you know what i right. mean but right. it's just you know when you're in an environment it's crowded you got alcohol and all kinds of other mm-hmm. shit going on bro like you know you, you just know. rather have it you know? than not have it and some sure. people have bad days you know stressed out over work and whatever they got going on right. and then this you know it's just life changing things that happen in an instant over an argument over anything mm-hmm. you know it's crazy bro i'm telling you you got to have your shit together up here you got to be able to think and maneuver and strategize through life on a daily basis bro yeah you know what i'm yep. saying you got to know how to avoid people and, and you know and and uh you know just you got a lot of negative people and negative things people going on and mm-hmm. and you know that shit is contagious bro you know yeah, what i'm no, saying negative t- energy is strong like positive some of that energy some of the time, is <clears throat> like you said you, you're, you're staying away from that shit and it just so happens to, you know what I'm saying, somebody try and try you. And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm not out here looking for it. You know what I'm saying? But it's a fucked up world, man. Yeah, no, no doubt about it, bro. It is. But, you know, it, you know, at the end of the day, you just got to make the best of your life, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Every day I just, you know, I, I build, I be, everything I build, I build upon gratitude. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just being grateful for everything, bro. Right, for sure. You know yeah, what I mean? You got to stay humble. Yep, no doubt humble. about it, bro. But, um, yeah, man, everything for me, bro, is just like, you know, I just want to keep, you know, growing. I want to keep, you know, obtaining, you know, because I tell people it's one thing it's one thing to obtain everything and it's another to maintain everything. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And that's a job in itself, bro. Right. You know, and it takes a lot of discipline, it takes a lot of focus. It takes sacrifice, mm-hmm. all that type of stuff, man, you know, but. 
I'm like, shit, bro, I, I, I got more now doing the right thing than I ever did having the, doing the wrong thing. And it feels so much better, man. Yeah, and, and they can't come take this shit exactly. from you, bro. You exactly. know what I'm saying? You can hustle your whole motherfucking life, and the feds come in one day and take everything you hustled right. your whole motherfucking life for. Yeah, I had traffic <laughs> at the house for a, a different reason before I was doing <laughs> the shoe shit, and now I was like, so many people come to the house for shoes. It was like, shit, cut that shit out, and you know what I mean? And, uh... It's like you 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 can make your money, man. You ain't gotta you ain't gotta risk it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it, I don't know, man. It's just when I was younger, bro. I had kids young. I didn't had no education, so I wasn't gonna get no good job. Then I had three kids. That was all child support. You know, it was on my ass. And I'm like, what kind of j- good job am I gonna get that I could afford to pay child support and be able to live? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was like, man, I'm straight. I'm just gonna hustled for the rest of my life right. you know what i'm saying until that shit landed me in prison bro because you know sometimes you know there's so much more to it than just the money you know what mm-hmm. i mean there's a lot of shit that come with that bro yeah. you know what i mean speaking and on that i want to plug uh local 687 ubc uh carpenters union man uh i jumped in i'm a fourth year apprentice now but like you said, you you don't need too much shit to get in, man. You just got to be willing to work and willing to be there, and, and you can make some pretty damn good money without having to go to college or or, or do any of the things that you don't want to do. You know, um, like I said, I make pretty pretty good money doing what I do, and that's kind of what's held me back from doing the store the whole store thing because I make good money. You know. Yeah, yeah, I understand, man. Um, skill trades, bro. Uh, shout out to Juan Ortiz, man. Juan Ortiz, that's my father-in-law. Get the fuck Swear out of here. Dog, yeah. that's my man, yeah. bro. That's the yeah. whole Ortiz. Uh, uh, Jake. Shout out to Jake, Jake Josh. Josh. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm that's saying? My that's my brother in law. That's my people, man. Yeah. I was at I was with uh Jake at a couple different joints across okay. the yep. state. Yep. And uh his dad, Juan, and his family grew up with my mom and my family. Small and world. uh yeah, sometimes he used to bring my mom and my kids up north to come visit me. Yeah. He'd come see Jake and bring my mom and the kids right, to come right. see me, dog. Yep. Yeah, I, I got so much love and respect for them, man. Yep, you yeah, know, Juan, but put, Juan put me in the door. He's man, in the Carpenters. Uh, yeah. He's yeah. In the VA. Uh, yeah, if anybody's out there, 18 years old, looking for a job, man. Get Jake a hold. does uh, meal rights. Yep, yep. Yeah, but them skill trades though, man, they pay good, man. Yeah. And and Juan was telling me they train you, they yep. they'll teach you everything. And, so like and I go to school every two weeks and I get paid like I'm at work to go to school. I get paid an eight hour day like I was fucking humping board or doing whatever I was doing at work, mm-hmm. and I'll be in school actually learning something else in my trade. Uh, right now I'm I'm in a stair building class. I'm learning how to build stairs, and like I said, I get paid to go to school. You know? That's really dope, and that's yeah. something that's going to last you a lifetime, bro. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You know, good for you, man. Yeah. You know, I just, uh, and and that's, that's uh, you, you know, I think about the pandemic and what it did to society and our people because there's so many businesses that are struggling because they can't find committed people to work. Mm-hmm. And it's like, damn, well, like, did the pandemic just give everybody an excuse to just get lazy and not work and right. not want to do shit and looking for a handout and you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, like everything I've ever known in life is just to go and get it. Don't wait yeah. on nothing yep. and nobody, bro. You know what I'm saying? I feel like with them giving out that much money for that long, it, it fucked a lot of people up. Honestly, uh, I wasn't I wasn't fortunate to to be able to stay at home with the kids and collect unemployment. My shit was all fucked up, and I had a lot of bills racking up. I had to go back to work as soon as I could, but. Um, I mean, I see it even in my daughter in, in school. You know, she she's behind a little bit due to you know not having that that hands on and, and being with other kids and, and socially mm. and you know mentally, uh, she she's a little bit behind now and um, yeah, it's crazy. So I'm, I'm I'm looking at your shirt, the anti-social social club, mm-hmm. and I thought that was really clever the first time I ever seen it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. But you know, it's just that's like a new era to me of people who are antisocial. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like when I grew up, I was accustomed to groups. I was accustomed to socializing and people having their their groups. Little you know clicks, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Whether it was gangs or whatever, mm-hmm. everybody was always socializing in some form or another. Right. And then I when I come home I see a lot of people who are withdrawn and I hear a lot of people, I hate people, I hate people. Yeah, I'm like yeah. How the fuck you're a person too? You yeah, know what exactly. I'm saying? Right, right. And it's like, how did it get there though, bro? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, how did we get to that point? 
And, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's really sad, you know, to see people not having the opportunity to enjoy, you know, uh, other people and, and, you know, encounters with them and not only that, but just, you know, life in general, bro. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Like I said, today we was able to have a great day at the beach and a lot of my homies, we all got together and was drinking, playing cornhole, barbecuing, you know, we had, a, it was a beautiful day and, and sometimes it's like you take little shit like that for granted, you know, getting together with people and having good conversations and laughing and, and not having, uh, you know, to worry about anything or, you know, no money wasn't an issue. It was like nothing, you know, nothing was holding anybody back from having a good time, essentially. So uh, love days like that. Man. I, I know. I know. It feels so good, bro. If it, you know, times like that are just priceless. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like money could not buy, mm -hmm. you know, the love that you feel when right. you're with your family people when you're yeah, with your family your friends you, you know the wives the everybody's girls everybody's yep. kids every mm -hmm. you know everybody's catching up it's just you know it feels good bro yep. you know what yep. i mean um you know even just you know the events like uh me and my family we were in the parade the cinco de mile parade bro mm -hmm. and i had never ever ever seen burner packed the way that it was bro I there was it so many people out there and it was just so great to see the community and everybody just out there enjoying themselves like there was no shootings there was no fighting mm -hmm. there was no nothing bro yep. and there was so much participation as well from everybody you know and it and that's what it takes bro to be able to thrive you know what i'm saying and so i didn't make it this year but it must have changed a lot because uh, the last couple years i done been i done got stretched five six times damn for yeah, real i don't know what it is <laughs> gang squad i am not in the gang stop <laughs> stretching me <laughs> yeah man that was crazy man them days was hectic bro back in the days yep, man gang yep. squad they had the burgundies, the uh, well, they had the gold letters, the blue and whites. <coughs> then they had the jumper man in the back. They had chase mm -hmm. you down because yeah. we was always spray painting walls and shit. And but it's, we get we get the running. So now they kept two runners in the back. As soon right. as they pull up, yep. you getting chased, man. Hell yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah, I remember my homie had some weed on him when we got stretched, and he was like, should I run? And I was like, fuck, I don't know what you should do, you know? And, <laughs> and the boys went right in his shit, pulled out like an ounce of weed and put it back in his pocket and was like, get the fuck out of here. We're looking for guns. And I was yep. like, they ain't really fucking with us, but it's still the inconvenience, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, I'm stretched. chilling. I'm not on no bullshit. Kill my whole here to have a good time. We're smoking, you know what I'm saying? And pull up on us, have motherfuckers thinking their life's about to change. You know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. nine times out of 10, that's how you feel when you get pulled over. Whether you got some shit on you or you don't, you're like, damn, my life's about to change, you know? Hell yeah, no doubt about it, man. Man, I miss the carnival in Lincoln Park too, man. I can't wait though for like Rouge Days and just all the carnivals to mm -hmm. come back, man. I'm like a big ass kid, bro. Oh, I love yeah. all that shit for, for sure. real. I want the elephant ears and the cotton candy oh, yeah. and that lemonade, lemonade, that lemonade and all that you. shit, bro. Yeah, I swear I ain't even gonna crucial. lie. I jump on a ride or two bumper cars, oh, anything. Yeah. <laughs> See, I done got scarred by them little them little rinky dink amusement parks, man. I uh <laughs> We was on the zipper and somebody threw up from the top and that shit was just leaking through the cages and I was like, oh hell no, never again will I ride one of these rides. <laughs> you ever go to Frankenmuth, bro? Uh, way, way, way back in the day. We was little kids. I don't remember too much about it, but I know mm -hmm. it was the shit. It's a dope place to go, bro. Mm -hmm. You should think about taking your family there hell one of yeah. these days to get some time, man. For sure. Yo, they got a place there called Splash Village. You know, it's family friendly. They got pools, slides, all kinds of Hell shit. Yeah. Then, like, down the street, they got, like, a petting zoo. I took my grandson there. He loved it, bro. They had so many animals, bro. It was really, that's really lit. dope. Hell yeah, that's lit. Yo, just, you know, just things like that. Something that's an, excuse me, an hour, hour and a half way. Something that you can enjoy with your right. family. Yep, yep. You know, I just, that, that to me makes life, you know, worth, like, you know, yeah, worth we, living. Uh, me and my brother, we get a couple people together, and we do a little camping trip, like, uh, was it Labor Day? We go to this Christian campground, and we be blowing that motherfucker down. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's like, it's a lot of RVs, but they have rustic, like, tent camping, uh -huh. and no one really does that. So it just be, we take over that whole area and be having the speaker and, mm -hmm. you know, get the uh, fire going and 
light the fire up. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it, man. I'm looking forward to just, you know, smelling barbecue every day mm-hmm. now. You know, everybody doing their thing. But uh, listen, bro, I want you to tell everybody where they can find you, man, how they can get a hold of you if they want to get their they shoe game together, you for know. Sure, for sure. Yeah, uh, like I said, I do everything through my Instagram. That's on uh, at Sneak Pete 2020. Uh, I run a shop out of my house located in Southgate near uh, Dixon North Line area. Uh, shoot me a DM. Let me know what you're looking for. And uh, we'll get you over there and get you together. Shoes, clothes, hats, accessories, a little bit of everything. Bring that bread with you too, man. You prefer oh, cash. Oh, yeah. All the time, man. Cash Listen, Dre, team. man, thank you for coming by the studio, man. Sharing your story, sharing your hustle with us, man. And, uh, you know, I you know, I look forward to building with you and buying some more shoes in the future, man. I already know. So uh, shout out to everybody, man. Thank you for all the love and support. Much love to uh, Babe Cave Down River, L.A. Landscaping, Guys Pizza, all my family, friends, and loved ones, and always my dogs, uh, the Legal Aliens Podcast. Much love Appreciate to you guys. You. Yep.